going to see uh, the last topic of neural networks which is introduction to RNN. RNN stands for recurrent neural network. So let us dive into the introduction to RNN and we saw that CNN was the real beginning of deep neural networks. Okay, But it was not easy for the shallow neural networks to extract any high level features from the data and general expression ability was also not good. right? So what was the need for RNN? So convolutional neural network, we know that it uses local correlation for uh, the image as the data that you use and it also includes the idea of weight sharing and therefore it is very suitable for any data with pictures or images which require some spatial and local correlation. But then when we have any textual data or any speed signal or any uh, ch predictions like change of stock market over the time, you know, whenever you have temporal data available with you, that is some signals which have space as well as temporal dimensions, then at that time what you require is something different. So that led to the need of RNN. Now, uh, the temporal data does not necessarily have a local relevance, like local correlation is not, may not be needed. And moreover, you do not have a fixed length of data over there with respect to time. The length of the data in the time dimension is also variable. That's why CNN are not good at processing such data. So we required something different and there came RNN. So RNN stands for a recurrent neural network, which is a kind of artificial neural, uh, neural network that is used in speech recognition and NLP, which is natural language processing. So RNN is used in deep learning and also in the development of the uh, models that imitate the activity of neurons in the human brain. And they are designed to recognize the patterns and the sequences of data. For an example, the text, genomes, handwriting, any spoken word and numerical time series data which are coming out of sensors or predictions of stock market with respect to time or any other government agencies whatsoever. Now this RNN looks similar to the traditional neural network except that you have a feedback element to it that is a memory is added to the neuron. So the computation is to include a simple memory. This I will explain you when I teach you about a little um, block diagram about RNN. So the RNN network is a type of deep learning algorithm which makes which for, which is going to follow a sequential approach because it is dependent on time. In neural network, we always assume that each input and output is dependent on every other layer. And these type of neural networks are called as recurrent neural network because they are going to sequentially perform any mathematical computations that are going to happen inside that network. Now, this is a very simple block diagram that I can explain. It is not exactly a block diagram, but yes, it is a shorter block diagram is what I can say in general, wherein you can see that if you take a normal neural network, you have an input and an output, but here you will see there is a feedback. Okay, so you can see the output is sent back to itself that counts on an RNN. How this is built and everything we are going to see. Now, uh, let us see. RNN with respect to a very quick example wherein we are going to predict what chef is going to cook today. So there are three options here, apple, buy, burger and chicken. Now we have to define a cooking schedule. Suppose if it is uh, from Monday to Saturday. So this is the sequence of the schedule that it is going to cook. So the sequence you can understand is after a pie, a burger and a chicken. So that is the schedule it is following in a sequence. Now. Here, what we are doing here, what the chef is going to do is we feed it to an RNN. So suppose based on what was cooked on yesterday. So if yesterday it was an apple pie, then definitely today it is going to be what? As I told you in the sequence, it is going to be a burger. Suppose if today was burger, sorry, sorry for this, now. So this sequence you please remember. So after apple pie, burger, and then after that chicken. So we are going to see in the cooking schedule, um, if you give uh, apple pie to the RNN, you can predict that definitely it is going to cook a burger, correct? It is going to cook a burger today. So for that, you should know what is being cooked yesterday. So suppose this burger goes off now as a yesterday. Suppose if it was yesterday, the burger was cooked. So today it is going to be a chicken. Okay, so if you know the sequence, you can predict what is going to be cooked today if you know the sequence and you know what was cooked yesterday. So that was the demand. So what you're exactly thinking here is the previous output here is to be fed back and to get the new prediction. So 
so that's how is the entire principle of an RNN how it is going to work so what you can do is uh, now dive into the technicalities so if you know the sequence like the for there were three uh, sequence uh, three three things in a sequence pie a burger and a chicken so I represent them as unit vectors so you can see here I have the first sequence numbered as 100 for the second option it is 010 and for the third option it is 001 so I just put it down as an RNN matrix wherein I get it as say 010 001 and then 100 so this is what is an RNN matrix where you just combine the entire uh, uh, you know vectors that are available as your sequence options now what are you going to do now how are you going to calculate you just take this RNN matrix and you provide each one of the vector to it so if suppose today it was cooked as an apple pie this 100 gets multiplied with this RNN matrix so it gives you after multiplication 0 1 0 so you know what next is going to be cooked it will be a burger similarly when you give burger multiply the matrix you will get a chicken similarly you multiply the chicken matrix and you get next is an apple pie so that's how the RNN is going to compute for you the next sequence that is going to come I hope it is clear that's how a vector calculation process is done you have your vectors then you have your RNN matrix you multiply them and you get what is the next sequence so this is I am just going to put this more into detailed uh, pictorial way where how it works as a feed forward network so you can see this is how it is going to be happen inside the RNN matrix you are not able to see but how you got the answer is what you are able to see over here okay I hope uh, it is clear so if you can see technically this is how an RNN uh, entire neural neural network based uh, feedback network is what I can say uh, if you dive into depth of how an RNN block diagram might look like based on the little experiment that I taught you just now this is how it is so whatever you are predicting it comes back to predict the next sequence this is how a simple RNN works now suppose you have a more complicated situation wherein you just don't have a sequence but also you have got certain conditions where you want to you know predict the future predict the next sequence so suppose I keep that condition here as a weather so suppose if it is a sunny day then the weather is going to cook this um, suppose it is a sunny weather the chef is going to cook whatever was there as cooked as yesterday so suppose if it was an apple pie and today it is a sunny day then again the chef is going to cook an apple pie otherwise if it is a rainy day then it is going to cook the next thing in the sequence so if you remember after apple pie it was burger so if it is a rainy day then the chef will cook a burger otherwise it will cook again the apple pie I hope the situation is clear so now here chef is going to, to cook today will not only be determined by the sequence that has been fed back but also on a new condition which is being given which is your weather correct so suppose if yesterday was an apple pie and today it is a rainy day then the next sequence will come so definitely it is going to be a burger but suppose if it was a burger that was cooked today and the next day it is again sunny day so it is again going to cook burger for you I hope the situation is clear so here now the next sequence is dependent on not only what was given back yesterday but also on to the today's weather okay there's one more condition that has been added now how do you frame a network for it okay so so now you have got apart from these three unit vectors uh, three three vectors of the sequences you have got two conditions so two separate vectors i am creating sunny one zero and zero one first so these two are again conditional vectors and these three are sequential vector vectors and this is how it works so you can see the entire neural network it is going to predict the food it takes food what has been cooked also as an input apart from that it is also going to take weather as also as an input and then it is going to merge to give you the basic requirement but after that what you are supposed to do even this burger you have to feed back again correct so what is going to happen what was cooked will be again fed back but today's weather will also be checked so based on that you will merge it and predict the next sequence I hope this calculation of RNN how it does is clear with this one simple example now why exactly do you require RNN we are going to see so 
you have certain sequential data which works with variable length. So what is sequential data wherein the order really matters, especially the text documents for an example. The order really matters. So the elements of the sequence they are related to each other. So whenever you are working with sequential data, you require a separate neural network which is RNN. Now, pardon me for this. I'm sorry. So we were here. So now uh, we are going to see what exactly uh, are the some other places where you can use RNN. So you can see the sequences in the wild. For an example, in audio, when you have a sequence of sound waves, order is important. There, that is the place where you'll be using RNN. Another example could be, um, you know, a text message wherein you can have it as a sequence of characters or sequence of words as it really matters. And next would be sequence modeling problem wherein you are going to predict the next word. For an example, this is more uh, you are seeing these days on search engines, right? So this morning I took my cat for and it is going to predict a next thing especially again in WhatsApp, you know, whenever you are typing, it is going to predict the next word for you. So these predictions will definitely make use of RNN. Next, going around with feed-forward neural network, what is the problem? Why you should go for an RNN and not any other network? So I would say the first problem with feed-forward neural network is its variable length input. I use a fixed window length input and work with an RNN. How do we do that? We are going to see next. And uh, second problem would feed forward network would be it cannot model long term dependency. You know, for an example, if I take this sentence, France is the place where I grew up and now I live in Boston, I speak dash. So definitely as a person, you can say I speak fluent French. But for this, your network has to have memory, which a feed forward network do not have. And the third problem is the counts don't preserve the order. So if I see this particular example, uh, the food was good, not bad at all versus the food was bad, not good at all. You can see uh, the first sentence is a positive sentiment and the next one is a negative sentiment. But then if you just take count of the words, it can say good, bad like that. But order of the words also change the sentiment of that particular sentence. So this is not possible in feed forward neural network to decode the sentiment. Um, another is uh you use a really big fixed win window when you are going to you may use a very big fixed window if you are using with a feed forward network that could be ideally one solution uh you know for the variable when that is some or um, i can talk on the fourth par problem with feed forward neural network that it does not have parameter sharing so you could see that uh, every word has got a separate vector. If at all I am using a fixed window, then a fixed length of vector. Then you can imagine the length of your uh, uh, sequence that would go. It will be very difficult. Okay, so that is another problem. And if you really want to go for handling these sequences, you modeling these sequences, to the, des the design criteria would hold the following. You have to work with the variable length sequences. You need to handle it. Second is you have to find out long-term dependencies of a sentence. You got to have certain memory element. You have to maintain information about order. Okay, how does change in the order or the sequence of a word changes the semantic? Also, you require something like sharing the parameters across the sequences. So to overcome all these things, we have to design RNN which is a recurrent neural network, which is an approach towards sequencing the modeling problems of a feed-forward network. So you can see this is a standard neural network. I'm not working more on the block diagram right now, as I'll be teaching you later. But for now, you can see input is dependent on, and then you have a predicted output, which is also sequential data. So a standard neural network cannot handle this, as we have just ex explained you. Whereas if you take a, r a recurrent neural network, then definitely it can with the help of a feedback that is present. So you have a separate element here called HT, which we call a state of this RNN, which is going to really help you out with the prediction of the next output that is going to come with respect to time. So you could say that uh, current state, if I am talking current state, I label as HT. It is a mathematical function of not only the current input, but also the previous state, previous output of the RNN. So current output is a function of previous output or previous state and an input. That's what we can say. 
um, that's a self state a function parameterized by weight a old state and an input vector so old state is important current input is is important to predict the current state of an RNN thereby predicting the current output right so you take an input vector suppose you apply any mathematical function for an example here activation function is being applied to a linear relationship of weights and input and weights and previous state to calculate the current state we call it also as an hidden state okay so right so with that you are going to predict your output vector so this particular terminology you have to really understand with an input we calculate the current state which we also call as a hidden state mathematical function of a set of linear function comprising of weights multiplied with input current input weights multiplied with previous state and with that you will calculate the current output I hope it is clear so you can see this is the computational graph across time if I want to say so time steps pay every every time steps you are going to determine your output so at zero the time set output is calculated given to the first time step output is calculated given to the second time step and individually the outputs are also calculated you can see this will go on till 10th times you know 10th time step in between you can see uh, the weights have been passed the parameters have been passed and you have got reduced same weight matrices at every time sorry reusing the same ma weight matrices at the same time so when you are doing that you are reducing the number of parameters so this is the block diagram of RNN is what I can say uh, you have got a forward pass that you have been working on and then finally you will aggregate it to get the final answer so that's how an RNN actually works so this was for you towards introduction of RNN